It has, unfortunately, been far too long since I have visited a museum. But I do still love the idea of history told through art. You are currently looking at a fresco painted by students of the Master Raphael that depicts one of the turning points in Western history. The Emperor Constantine I, who you can see in his golden armor, is preparing to fight the Battle of the Milvian Bridge. He looks up to the sky, turns his head at exactly the right angle, and sees a glowing cross, and adopts the motto, by this, conquer. The battle is decisive. One year later, the Roman Empire officially recognizes Christianity as a religion, which slowly spreads throughout Western civilization, and the rest is history. The cross in the sky changed history, and you can see the exact same cross for yourselves just by walking outside on a clear day, looking up at the bright blue sky, and turning your heads at exactly the right angle. The cross is known as Heidinger's brushes, and here is why it happens. This is the view your optometrist or ophthalmologist has when they look through your pupil and into the back of your eye. If you are able to see the cross, it is only because sunlight enters your eye at exactly the right angle, passes through, and is absorbed by a little yellow spot in the back called macular pigment. Before tonight, you may not have even known that you had a little yellow macular pigment spot in your eye. But what if I told you that knowing the density of that little macular pigment spot can tell us more about your health, your risk for disease, and how you will live and die than you could possibly imagine. So what is macular pigment, other than one of the reasons that Christianity spread throughout Western civilization? Well, to answer that question, we need to know just a little bit more about the foods that you eat and what your body does with those foods. Macular pigment is made of lutein and its isomers, which have the same chemical formula, but are structured just a little bit differently. For the sake of ease, we will speak more about lutein than the others. Lutein is a carotenoid, which is a kind of antioxidant, anti-inflammatory plant pigment that you would find in healthy foods like dark green leafy veggies. You don't only eat dark green leafy veggies, and lutein is not the only carotenoid in your diet. Despite the fact that there are about 700 different carotenoids in nature, your body chooses lutein and its isomers to use to build that spot. Now, we say trite things all the time where our diets are concerned, like, you are what you eat, but it must physically be true. We don't make lutein ourselves. If we don't eat it, we don't have it. So why then does your body pick lutein and reject everything else? Well, as it turns out, there are some really good reasons for this biological pickiness. High on the list of things that people complain about with advancing age is degrading vision. Some of you may even be a little bit worried about your drive home tonight because of the problem that you see on your screen, glare. Your little macular pigment spot, as it turns out, may actually be able to improve your visual function in challenging visual conditions like these or like these. This is because macular pigment absorbs bluish light, the very light that causes the glare in the headlight and obscures your view of the mountains in the distance. As it turns out, 
people with higher macular pigment density are less bothered by glare and can see significantly farther outdoors, up to hundreds of feet farther than people with low macular pigment, but otherwise equally perfect vision on an eye chart. So if you had no other reason to care about your little macular pigment spot, better visual function in challenging visual conditions is a great reason for boosting your numbers. But as it turns out, your little macular pigment spot may also be responsible for saving your sight as you age. In years of teaching, I asked my students the same morbid, semi-rhetorical, hypothetical question. People with sensory impairment do not get to choose which sense is affected. But what if you did? What if you had to choose a sense to lose? What would you pick? Would you pick your sight? Your hearing? Your sense of taste or smell? Your sense of touch? In years of asking this question, almost no one has ever picked sight. We are visual animals. So how can your little macular pigment spot save your sight? Well, sight is essentially a combination of two things. Healthy eyes that tell a healthy brain what kind of a world to create. This is an image of a healthy retina. And this is an image of a retina with age-related macular degeneration, one of the leading causes of blindness. All of those little spots that you see are essentially gunk. Bits of fats and proteins, once part of the cells of the retina, that have become so degenerated, the retina pulls them out and forms these little clumps. This is a slice of brain with Alzheimer's disease. Those plaques that you see encircled on your screen are made of almost the exact same gunk as you see in the retina. In fact, some people have gone as far as to say that age-related macular degeneration is basically Alzheimer's disease in the eye. Certainly, people with macular degeneration are significantly more likely to go on to develop Alzheimer's disease. In so many ways, retina is brain. It's like a little piece of brain that's detached and pushed forward in space, where it serves as a handy bellwether for understanding the health of the rest of the brain. It's like an early warning system that disease is starting in a tissue you can actually see. As it turns out, that early warning system is incredibly beneficial because there is no cure for age-related macular degeneration or Alzheimer's disease. Luckily though, we do know a thing or two about preventing those diseases, and that is where our little yellow macular pigment spot re-enters the picture. Poor diet quality is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, macular degeneration, and a number of other chronic diseases like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and even acquired cancers. In essence, macular pigment is a measure of diet quality, one that changes as your diet changes. So, if your little macular pigment spot predicts all of this, why don't you know your numbers? You probably know your cholesterol. You probably know your blood pressure. You may even know if the long list of acronyms and abbreviations that stand for the labs that are drawn at your annual checkup are normal. So why don't you know this one? Well, to impart the seriousness of that particular question, I would like us to consider 
our own morbid, semi-rhetorical, hypothetical question of our own, and one that is a little bit more serious than which sense would you like to lose? I want you to think about your health. Project yourself forward in time, and in your head, answer this. At the end of the metaphorical day, what will your cause of death be? Will it be heart disease? Cancer? Alzheimer's disease? If you answered yes to any of those, statistically, you're, you're probably right. That is what we tend to die of here in the United States and in a few other places in the world. But more important than the answer to your question is the process that you used to get there. You probably thought about your family history. You probably thought about the foods you eat the exercise you may or may not get, the sleep that may or may not come naturally to you, the stress you might be under. And those diseases that were tops on our metaphorical list, they all have risk factors that overlap with diet being key among them. So now finally, I want you to think about the answer to one more question. When was the last time your doctor asked you about your diet? Measured it? Tracked it? Recommended changes to facilitate healthy eating and then followed up with you to see if you were successful? Measuring diet is hard. Tracking diet is harder, and recommending sustained dietary change when it's not particularly easy to measure or track feels like an impossibility. On the screen, you will see something oddly important to my family and me. If you're a healthcare provider, you will see in this list of acronyms and abbreviations, the labs that we commonly order and some that we not so commonly order to be able to more confidently declare a patient healthy. Note that macular pigment does not appear anywhere on this list. For years, my father was in the airlines, an industry that extensively measures and tracks its workforce for the obvious reason that a pilot in danger of a sudden stroke or heart attack is a risk for a major disaster. At age 66, on my father's last physical, he checked in as perfectly normal. And because of that fact, his doctors didn't necessarily feel a need to follow up. Just over one year after that physical was completed, my father died of stage four renal cancer that had been growing slowly for years and that neither he nor we had any idea that he had. My father died on May 7th. 2013, in the words of his oncologist, the healthiest sick person you would ever meet. My dad's doctors never measured his behavior. His history as an Air Force veteran who flew during the Vietnam War and in that capacity was exposed to Agent Orange, the herbicide we now know causes cancer, Turns out that was a pretty important part of his history to note. It was a tremendous knock to a body that lived a pilot's life, 
complete with frequent time zone changes and lack of sleep, lots and lots of stress, no time for exercise, and of course, airport food. My dad's example is heartbreaking and a little terrifying, and it represents a very significant problem that we need to solve in healthcare today. In under 10 minutes, I could tell you the density of your little macular pigment spot. And if I did, I would learn so much more about you than just your risk for macular degeneration. I would learn about your diet quality, how often you are eating those nutrient-dense foods that contain antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, like lutein. I would learn how effectively your body is pulling nutrition up from those foods and depositing it into your tissues to protect them. And I would learn something about a risk factor that was common to all of our answers to our morbid question. So maybe the little yellow spot that changed history can be a catalyst for changing healthcare. It is an innovative example of a solution to a seemingly otherwise intractable problem. How do we measure the complex health behaviors that we know are so important for our health outcomes, but that we are not measuring and not even consistently talking about today? At the end of the day, health is not your degree of normalcy on a list of acronyms you have to Google to understand. Health is behavior. Health is what we do. So how do we get to a world where our most complex health behaviors are measured concretely and accurately? by demanding one. Innovation follows need. We are all patients, including those of you who are watching who are also healthcare providers. When we patients demand answers to questions we can't currently answer, innovation follows. Thank you.